So today we're going to look at continuity and let's start out with definition. So continuity is hard to spell, so I'll just use, and so is continuous, so I'll use CTS. So F is continuous at X equals A if limb X approaches A, F of X equals F of A. So one way to think about this is limit equals value. It's the exact same definition for a continuous in calculus one and we had real functions, uh, real value inputs and outputs. So a function f is continuous on a set now the set needs to be a subset of the domain. So you want to talk about a function being continuous outside of its domain. Sometimes S equals the entire domain. So it's continuous on S if any point in S So if f is continuous at every single point inside S, you can say f is continuous on the set. So this is continuous on a set, and above is continuous at a single value or single point. Before we had continuous across an interval. So our sets before were all intervals of real numbers. So now sets can be more general. Usually they're going to be two or three dimensions. Now, if you remove any uh, stipulations on continuous at a point or continuous on a set, if you talk about a function, f is continuous if it's continuous on the entire domain. So if a function is continuous on every single input, it's continuous. So we'll start out in this example with a function of two variables. So we're going to start out with a function that's a step function. It's going to be xy over x squared plus y squared if we're not at the origin. And if we are at the origin, the value will be 0. And we're going to answer the question, where is f continuous? So if x, y is not 0, 0, the function is x, y over x squared plus y squared. If x and y are not both 0, what, will, what can you say definitively about the denominator of this? If x and y are not both 0. What can we say about the denominator? Can't be zero, and more specifically, it has to be positive. So if we're not at the origin, we're not dividing by zero. You can be on either axis, x or y individually could be zero. As long as they're not both zero, you will not get your divide by zero problem. So what that means is this function f is going to be continuous, not at the origin. 
So any questions about that? Just looking at the function, you're just multiplying and then dividing as long as you're not, and there's no square roots, so I got no uh, imaginary issues to worry about. There's no logarithms. And the only thing I need to worry about is dividing by zero. That's only going to happen at the origin. So this function is continuous everywhere else. Now the only question is, is this function also continuous at the origin? So we're about to check that. So I can already say f is continuous on a few ways to write it, r2 minus the origin. So you could write it as r2 minus 0, or you could write it as r2 minus the point 0, 0. So all we have to do now is check if f is continuous at the origin. So two things I have to check. One is the limit, and two is the value. Let's do the value first. It's easy. So we're checking continuous at 0, 0. So first thing we're going to do is take 0, 0 and f it. What do we get according to the function definition? 0. Not 0 over 0 because we're using step 2. So we have x, y is 0, 0. So we're using the second step right here, which tells us our function value is 0. Now we're going to find the limit of this function. So right now, try to find two paths that give you different values. See if you can do that. Do one linear path and one nonlinear path. So let's do TT, that'll be alpha 1, and let's do that quadratic path, the regular parabola, which will be alpha 2, will be T comma T squared. Let's try these two paths.
So any questions on the alpha one path? Getting the half on that. Now what about the alpha two path? I did as much algebraic reduction as I can. What's the limit of t over one plus t squared? Super easy limit, zero. zero. All right, what can I now say about the limit? I got one half and zero. Does not exist, so I don't have any limit here. So that non-existent limit doesn't equal any number, no matter what number I got. If my limit doesn't exist, I'm not continuous. So we're trying to figure out if uh, if one is two. I was trying to figure out does the limit where are we? Does the limit equal the value? So that's what I was trying to figure out. So the value was super easy to get. That was zero from this uh, second part of the step function. And then we just had to figure out is the limit always zero? And we found the limit. Now, actually, I was done as soon as <clears throat> I had looked at alpha 1 and got not 0. So right away, I could say the function is not continuous. Because even if the entire limit was 1 half, it's already failing right here. So the fact that I didn't get 0, I could already say that the function was not continuous. I just kept going and found a second path which did equal zero. However, the fact that these didn't match means my limit doesn't exist. So if I found the other zero first, I'd have to keep going because it's not enough right there to find two limits, or the limit is zero on one path. You have to determine the limit zero on all the paths. All right, so we can answer the question. When is f continuous? We can now definitively say 0, 0 is not continuous, so it's r minus 0, 0. So that is the entire set we're continuous on. So I was checking before, is 0, 0 in or out? We just determined that 0, 0 is out. So our last example we're about to do is show a function has no limit at 0, 0. So our function f of x, y, 2x squared y divided by x to the fourth y squared x to the fourth plus y squared all right so I'm already telling you limit doesn't exist so how are you going to go about showing this So we're going to find multiple paths, just like we did last time, that lead to different limit values. When in doubt, one linear path and one nonlinear path are good defaults. You could also approach on one of the two axes and then approach not on one of those two axes. That's another good option. Sometimes just going on the x-axis and y-axis is enough to give you different values. Sometimes not. So these are two good paths to start with but you can pick any two paths. Hopefully the first two I pick will give me different values. If you pick two paths give you the same value, pick a third one. If you keep getting the same value, pick a fourth one. Don't grab linear ones every time. So if linear keeps not working, grab quadratic. You could go to cubic or something fancier, but usually between linear and quadratic you should have enough.
So I took my alpha one path to be the y-axis, going on the y-axis, approaching the origin. So my x was zero, my y was t, and I'm gonna shrink my y to zero. So graphed out, that's the vertical path right there. Now if you want, you can absolutely write x equals zero, y equals t. That was accounted for when I wrote this alpha one of t equals zero t. So you see the x of t function first, the y of t function second, and that means t has to approach zero in order to hit the origin. And I just did that substitution in. My numerator became zero. My denominator became zero plus t squared. So this function was zero over t squared, always zero. And therefore, no matter what t was approaching, I was gonna get zero out of my limit right here. All right, so any questions on that uh, zero path, or zero value? You don't have to make the choices I'm making. I'm just gonna pick tt, which will be the diagonal x equals y uh, approach right there. Same t approaching zero. Now we're gonna have two t squared t over t to the fourth plus t squared. So I can factor out a t and cancel. When t approaches zero, I have zero over zero plus one, which is zero. So alpha two gave me the same value. Did anybody find a path that did not give zero? All right, so we got a couple of choices. Uh, t and t squared. T and t squared, did that work for you also? All right, let's get crazy and go t squared t. So we'll do a parabola, but this parabola, I'll switch to blue. So I am gonna use the happy parabola, but the one opening to the right. So the equation for this parabola is not x equals y squared, but it's now, no, it is x equals y squared, but not the y squared equals x. So I'm gonna use the x equals y squared parabola, and we'll call this alpha three of t. Now in this one, if you know y, you know x. So in this one, t squared comma t, so if you know your y coordinate, if you square it, you get x. So if I look at my y coordinate as t, I square it, I get x, that's t squared. You can totally use t, t squared, which would be this red parabola right up there. You can use either one. I'm just doing something slightly different. You can also do a negative sad parabola really easily, just in this case use negative for y your y value, you'll have the sad parabola, or you could have the sideways sad parabola, which would be negative t squared comma t. So lots of ways to approach zero. Hopefully we'll get the different value this time. So in this case, I can factor out t squared. So we have two t cubed. Over t to the six plus one. Oh no, we get zero here. 
3 over 1, which is 0. All right, so that one's going to fail. Now we use the one that you told me would work, which is swap x and y, t, t squared. We have t to the fourth divided by t to the fourth plus t to the fourth. And here we get 1. All right, so 1 is not equal to 0. So right here you can say that two paths, different value, limit doesn't exist. So we get different values along different paths implies limit does not exist.